I've got about 10 minutes to, um, in which to articulate three or four years of work, but I'll do my best. ECUC, the Independent Constitutionalist UK Movement and Initiative, is a London-based think tank. Can you all hear me? Think tank. Mm -hmm. Our recently launched 10-page Declaration of Purpose, which has been circulated to all roundtable participants as background paper number eight, is the fruit of three or so years' collective endeavor and remains very much work in progress. I underscore work in progress. Its purpose is to facilitate systemic and curative reform of the current systems of government and economic <coughs> management in the UK and beyond, with a view over time to establishing in the UK and the beyond what we call people's political economies of inclusive trusteeship. Palliative tinkering with our broken political economies will no longer suffice we intend to use the existing system to become the system, to change the system, to recover trust. Why trust? Because people will begin to recover trust in each other only when they feel included in a collective political process that belongs to them, in which they have a meaningful part to play the fear, rivalry, mounting personal insecurities, and abrogation of personal responsibility generated by the current system must give way to mutual trust and reliance. This change of attitude across society will be possible <coughs> only if the means to life are available to all. A citizen's dividend funded from land rents may well prove to be a necessary starting point. Why peoples in the plural? Because constitutionalists are first and foremost believers in true democracy. Why political economy? Because moral and social purpose must precede the economic means of achieving such purpose. People are ends, not <coughs> means, and they and the planet they share with all other living species must be put before profit and mindless growth. Why inclusive trusteeship? Because even though Homo sapiens has become a major agent in shaping the circumstances of its own existence, the future of our species depends upon the survival of other living species and upon our sustainable use and replenishment of finite planetary resources. Recognizing this truth, constitutionalists believe that a viable political economy for the future must be symbiotic with planet Earth, enabling us as its custodian stewards to hold it in trust for future generations. Now what kind of structural of structure of political organization might achieve such systemic reform. In a nutshell, we believe participative, representative democracy. We believe that the prevailing elective representative democracy or democracies, as for example in the US, the UK and elsewhere, whereby citizen participation is confined to voting in local or general elections at distant intervals once every four or five years in many places, must now be replaced by participative representative democracy. This combines the ongoing involvement of citizens in the management of public affairs with genuine bottom-up representation, mandated and accountable. What kind of democratic tools then might be needed to bring about such reform of our political economies. First, 
widespread recognition and acceptance of a principle that all political power resides with the people. Second, widespread recognition and acceptance of the principle of constitutional supremacy, whereby the Constitution or some such statement of common purpose becomes the supreme law of any land. Third, a democratically derived, written and living constitution that belongs to the people, that sets out the abiding aspirations of the people and the rules for participative self-government. A constitution, moreover, whose terms are freely accessible, and this is terribly important, are freely accessible to all persons at all times, <coughs> whose revision and amendment can be enacted only through popular referendum following widespread democratic deliberation. Fourth, constitutionally entrenched provision for A, the separation of the three branches of government, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. B, protection of the public political space, which is the prime, the very first commons, commons and of the machinery of baseline and mid-level participatory democracy, as, for example, local constituency committees, citizens' juries, regional assemblies, and so forth, wherein genuinely participative and inclusive deliberation can take place. C, the protection of all other commons and public spaces and amenities from further sequestration and expropriation. <coughs> D, rules that ensure that political representatives of whatever kind, at whatever level, provide at all times genuinely mandated and accountable representation. These rules, moreover, should make appropriate use of the processes whereby representatives can be selected or removed from office. Some of these processes would, processes would be election, sortition, which is selection by lots, combinations of both, rotation as in the Swiss <coughs> Federal Council, where the president serves for one year only, renewal and recall. In this way, functional structures based, where possible, on time-limited allocation of responsibilities can be made to replace the fixed hierarchies, I repeat, the fixed hierarchies that have thus far caused so much status creation and corruption. Five, a system of education that at all levels makes provision for instruction and training in knowledge of the Constitution and the practice of participative representative democracy. And six, constitutionally entrenched rules, for example, ownership limitations, that provide for a plural and diverse media that, in providing information and opinion to the public, is fully supportive of all delib democratic deliberative processes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the list of what is possible is far beyond the time allotted to me this afternoon. And thank you for the time you're allotting to me. Even so, my purpose is to whet rather than cloy the hungry edge of your democratic appetites. <laughs> <laughs> All this and more is contained in our Declaration of Purpose and its explanatory notes. I would ask you to read it, to ponder every single word of it, and to give us your feedback. And who knows, over time it may just prove to be a first and modest step towards a viable alternative, towards the picture of our democratic future that friend Zhao called for on Tuesday. A step, that is, towards a unifying and inspiring narrative that could bring hope to our fellow citizens in these complex, fake, and challenging times. Thank you for your attention.